Hello and welcome back to the Women's Football Chat. Today we're going to be talking about why no domicile clubs can win the Women's Champions League. So obviously the Women's Champions League founded in 2009. Since it was founded, since we moved on from the UEFA Women's Cup, no WSL sides have won it. Since the WSL was founded, no WSL sides have won European competition. So clearly... English clubs are very strong. We know that. They've got some of the best players in the world. So we're going to talk about some reasons there as so to why that hasn't happened. The last winners, of course, were Arsenal. They won the UEFA Women's Cup in 2007. So it's been a very long time, hasn't it, Harry? Yeah, it's it's, it's really weird, as you say, because you, know, you look at the the domestic campaign we've just seen, where we've seen City and Chelsea you know, do incredibly well. I, and it, it's surprising to see that no, no English side are really challenging. Obviously, we know Chelsea went close this season and have been close. But apart from that, we've barely seen any representation in the UWCL. I mean, this season, for example, Arsenal will start Man United, knocked out by PSG. That's understandable. PSG were semi-finalists in the end. And I don't think United are one of the best sides in England. They're up there, but they're not part of that top you know, elite three. Arsenal were very disappointingly lost on penalties to Paris FC. That was more disappointing because if you think from an England point of view... Arsenal should have won that game and then they would have got to the Championship proper and then you know, you could have looked at trying to make a difference there. Yeah, I think the United situation was weird, wasn't it? Because obviously they lost quite a few players, yeah. quite a few key players. So there's a bit of a mitigating circumstance there because you would say that the second in the WSL should be as strong, if not stronger, than second in Division 1 Feminine. Yeah. So I, for me, there's definitely a, an interesting situation there because... I think City this season would beat PSG. 100%. And so as long as they don't lose all their players, which they might, we should see them be competitive in the Champions League next season. Arsenal, though, they definitely should have been there. And I think yeah. that's reflective of, of what's been a, a weird season for Arsenal where they've been really strong at times, but really bad at others. And they, they've not really found any consistency. So, yeah, I, I think next season we should see all three English sides, provided they don't get really difficult draws into the Women's Champions League. I know, obviously, like this season, we had Wolfsburg in the in the qualifiers, yeah. which is a really difficult game. And, and there's always going to be teams like that in there. But for me, there's no reason why the WSL shouldn't have three clubs. And once there are three clubs in there, it would be difficult to not, just to, to see a way that they don't reach the final, or at least the semi-finals, like at least one of the clubs. So... It's going to be it's going to be interesting. Obviously, a couple, let's talk reasons. Firstly, the WSL is very competitive. What we've seen this season is that while Barcelona have been rolling teams over nine 0 and I know people will disagree with me here because I've had loads of conversations with Barcelona fans on Twitter who seem to think that they don't have an easy league, but I think it's a simple fact that the Liga F, Liga F is just not competitive because Barcelona spend more than any other team, have a much better side than any other team, and win like nine, eight, seven, six nil most games. Chelsea had what one eight nil win this season mm. against Bristol City. They they battered Villa. That was about it. You know, City yeah. put a few past Tottenham. I can't recall another game where they got over six. That that's the key difference. Barcelona roll teams over. The league is just not competitive for them. So then they can rest up players and they turn up in the in the Women's Champions League with a fully rested squad ready and raring to go. And even if a couple of players did get injured, in the case of Alexia Butel, you'd think losing the best player in the world would be a a huge miss, but it's not because Otana Bomati is there, because yeah. Patrick Ayaro is there. So it's, I think, in that regard, the WSL just can't compete because Chelsea this season will run all the way by Manchester City in the title race. And it's not going to get easier next season. If anything, it's going to be even more competitive, which, was even, yeah. which doesn't feel possible given how tight this season was. Then we can also talk about the strength of those teams. Obviously, Barcelona are an incredible side, but Leon as well, and, and Wolfsburg in years before that. Over the last decade, we've seen a Barca Leon dominance and, and Wolfsburg just before that. Those three sides have been incredibly strong. And I think if you would, especially with Leon, when they won, what, four in a row, something like that, five in a yeah. row, I think when you look at that period, no matter the strength of the WSL size, they'd have never beaten them. And then you look at the fact Chelsea obviously got to the final in 2021. That was a, a really good achievement from them, but they got battered by Barcelona that day. They just, they couldn't compete. Barca scored five in the first 20 minutes and then that was game over. Yeah. I mean, and, and quite. I think now the the gap is closing. I think you look at this season hmm. and Chelsea were very hard done by in that second leg. I don't want to go over it again because we've already done enough videos where we've where we've got annoyed yeah. at that game. But I I think I think a lot of Barca fans would be able to admit now that Chelsea got very unlucky in that second leg, and without that red card, maybe we're looking at a completely different result. But. I, I, so I think it's as close as it's ever been to seeing an English winner. And next season with City, who should be as competitive yeah. as Chelsea, should be right in there. 
I'd be very surprised if we don't see an English finalist next season, especially with the unknown situation at Barcelona and Lyon, both losing their managers. I think Chelsea could get stronger with Juan Pasteur, which would be an interesting thought. I think City will only get better next season unless they lose a lot of players. I think Arsenal can only improve. They've not been great this year, but I think they've got potential to be really good next season. So there's a lot of promise, I think, and I think English clubs will be very competitive over the next few years. It's just a weird situation that they've not won anything in the last sort of five years, because the English club have been really competitive. Chelsea have got really far, never won it. Yeah, it is very interesting, especially when you look at Chelsea this season. They threw games away in other competitions to prioritise the Champions League, and it didn't pay off. And that's what you're talking yeah. about. You know, Chelsea were playing Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday for a good few weeks, and in there there was the loss to Manchester United in the FA Cup semi final, the loss to Liverpool in the WSL. They are all sandwiched near and in between the two legs against Barcelona. So and they had knock-on effects, and but as you say, going into next season, Chelsea with, with Bon Pastor, who has already proven that she can win it time after time after time, and you know, your two finalists from this year, your winner and your runner-up, are both you know could be could might turn up next season, and yeah, they might be right up there again. But you know, with neither of them having a manager at the moment, uh, and a few question marks over some of the players, you know, if you take the two finalists away, suddenly Chelsea and PSG for the Champions League final. And then you obviously touch on to Arsenal and City. Compared yeah. to last year through the qualifiers, I'd expect to see all three English sides through. It might be a tough draw, but for me, Man City, Man City definitely. Man City should definitely get through no matter who they play. Arsenal, if we do see a Wolfsburg or someone else in those places, it could cause them problems. But other than that, I'd expect to see all three English sides reach the at least the, the tournament proper. Yeah, and I think obviously this is the last year with the current format. We switch format next season. And you'd think with that, with the expansion of, with adding more teams, you would think that English clubs would have more of a chance of, of getting into the competition at the very least. And once they're in there, I think they would be competitive. We'll also have the Europa League coming in the 24-25 season. So, sorry, 25-26 season. So that's going to be really interesting to see. Another tier of European football. And I think we could see some, some English clubs go really deep in that as well. Because if Arsenal and City, for example, couldn't qualify for the Champions League, they could easily get in the Europa League. And you'd have to say with the quality in that, they should win it, realistically. Yeah. And even if United get their fourth, or well, Liverpool this season, but whoever that fourth place team is, they should be really competitive in, in the Europa League. So I think we, we could see English clubs... Start to be more competitive well, in think, Europe. That's what I think we need to see to see the yeah. WSL progress. Yeah, is it that changing of the guard? Then we've seen Barcelona and Leon have dominated it year on, like since it's you know it was formed. Is it now time for England to take over? To England to dominate the European landscape of women's football? I mean, you look at the quality of the sides in the WSL. There's a very good chance they do. There's a very very good chance they do. Well, especially with Nuco taking over this summer, so we're going to see new investment in the in the WSL. I think this could have an impact similar to that of the Premier League. If mm -hmm. you think back to when the the Premier League was founded in 1992, we saw a situation where English clubs have suddenly become a dominant force. And if it wasn't for Real Madrid, English clubs probably would have taken a, a whole host of, yeah. of Champions League titles. So. It's going to be really interesting to see what impact that has because I think further investment would only leave the WSL clubs with more of an advantage. Yeah. So if they can go out and buy the best players, they're going to have the best teams. So I think we could have a situation where the three WSL clubs that are in the Champions League are just the strongest teams. Yeah. And, we, and it's, going to, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Barcelona can match up against that. Because so far, despite the... the I think WSL is probably a richer league than the Liga F. I think it's probably more invested in league. Despite that, Barcelona have always come out on top, have always been able to spend more. Lyon have always been able to to come out on top, to have a better side. But will that new co manager just, just shoot that off into another area? And I think with the growth of the women's game as well, the WSL is positioned, because of its competitiveness, to really take advantage of that and because of its worldwide nature. Because quite frankly, yes, of course, watching Barcelona is incredible, and I've loved watching them in the Champions League this season. They play really, really nice football. But there's a reason I don't watch Barcelona Levante, and it's because, quite simply, it doesn't interest me. Barcelona are going to win 9-0. You know what's going to happen in that game. But you stick on any WSL game, and it's interesting. It's competitive. It's, you know, unless it's Chelsea-Bristol City, it's going to be a really tight game. So... I think in that regard, the WSL has that advantage. I hope it levels out a bit more because I still think the WSL, there's too much of a gulf between the top and the bottom. And I think that'll be interesting to see whether that closes up under Nuco because I hope it does because then we'll have a much yeah. more competitive league. But I think at the moment, the WSL clubs, with more investment coming in, 
the next few years. I think they're in poised in a really good position to finally claim a Champions League title. But it's going to be very interesting to see. It's a difficult thing to do. Lyon are a really good side. Yeah. Barcelona are a really good side. I think that Bayern disappointed this year, but they'll be keen to come back next season. We can already see they're investing massively by bringing in Lena Erbedorf. So I think it's going to be competitive next season. I think Chelsea will be right up there once again. I think Bon Pasteur will only enhance their quality there. She knows what it takes to win this competition, both as a player and a manager. So... I think it's going to be really interesting to see. And obviously Barcelona and Lyon without managers yet. Yeah. We know, who knows what's, who's taking those roles. So it's um, it's going to be an interesting season next season. Do, do, next, could, do you think that Chelsea are the most likely side to win it? Or, or could we see someone else? Um, uh, yeah, I think Chelsea, you know, I look at that Barcelona semi-final. They, they were so close. And, and again, we talk about the circumstances under that game in terms of officiating. But also in terms of, you know, I, I'm, I, to be honest... If you're telling me a fully fit Chelsea side with the likes of Sam Kerr, even Myra Ramirez in there, uh, Millie Bright as well as she, you know, full she was fitness, fully yeah. fit, then I look at that and I go, you're telling me Chelsea won their lap at Stamford Bridge with their fully fit 11? I think they come out on top of that. And then they've already, Chelsea have already proven they can beat Leon last season. So, you know, I, I think that would have been very, very interesting. In terms of Arsenal and City, I mean, I think they could definitely be curveballs. City probably more probably than Arsenal. But City could definitely ruffle a few feathers by reaching the semi-finals or something next season. The frustrating thing is, obviously, that Jill Rawdon and Khadija Shaw will both unlikely feature in the qualifiers. Yeah. So City will have to qualify without those players. But we've seen Fowler and Park step up massively into those roles. And with the you know a link with Vivian Miedemar, that looks like a deal that might happen. I think City will be, will be right there. Arsenal... They've got no excuses unless they draw someone really difficult. You know, they should have qualified this season. They have to qualify next season. If not, it's another year without yeah. without European football. In which case, do you start looking at Ida Val and going, well, what's going on here, mate? Because yeah. Arsenal need, you know, that extra revenue would help them compete with, with Chelsea and City, you'd think. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens next season. It's going to be a very interesting season next year. I'm sure there'll be lots of people with lots of thoughts on this on this discussion. So get involved in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed today's video, there'll be another one on screen now. Last week's video, we spoke about Mary Earps and where she's going to go next because it looks like she will leave the end of her Manchester United contract. So go ahead and give that a click. That's everything from us today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.